Open your Bibles, please, to the book of John, the third chapter. John chapter 3. In your Schofield Reference Bible, page 1117, beginning with the 14th verse, we'll read responsibly through verse 18. John chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. In your Schofield Bible, page 1117. As is our custom here at First Baptist Church, let's stand, please, for the reading of the Word of God. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And let's read the 18th together. He that believed on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so for our church. We thank you for your word, and we thank you that we have that which we need from thee in this, our book, the King James Bible. We thank you that we have a preacher who faithfully preaches thy word, and we thank you that we have a people here who are intent upon learning more of thy word and more about how to serve thee. Help each one here today that thou wouldst bless with thy spirit's presence and power. Those who might be here in a, just a casual way and those who might not intend to give much interest or attention to the service or the message, please work in those hearts especially, but work in every heart that we might go away from here with that which you want us to have from the service. Bless, we pray toward this end in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, our Heavenly Father, we come to the preaching of this wonderful, wonderful book. And I don't know of any better subject than I'm going to preach on this morning. I don't know of any better news, any better truth. And so I pray you to help me to do it justice. And certainly I pray you to help the people to pay attention. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to sit up straight. I want no one, uh, would you be very and clear the aisles back there? We're going to have folks walk in the aisle in a few minutes. Uh, just clear the aisles, if you would, please. And, I, just, and uh, come on in, folks. Find a seat. Hurry right quickly. As, uh, usher, send them up to the overflow there, would you, on the right? Uh, usher up there. Go back. Yeah, they're coming up right now. Uh, once the serv service starts, I want everybody to be very still and no one leaving. I want to talk to you this morning on something very vital. In fact, the most vital subject in all the Bible. I want to read, in a few moments, I'm going to read a passage or two that we read a while ago. And uh, I want to speak this morning on this, the only time I've done this in years. I'm bringing my second evangelistic sermon in, in a row on Sunday morning. I rarely ever do it, but this is the last Sunday of our fall program. And I want to speak this morning on the subject, He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth is not condemned. I want to read for you this verse. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Did you hear that? Didn't say he that joined the Baptist church is not condemned. Didn't say he that joined the Catholic church is not condemned. Didn't say he that confesses his sins to the Father is not condemned. Didn't say he that gets baptized is not condemned. It says, He that believeth on him. Are you listening to me? He that believeth on him is not condemned. I want to just hit that, that one verse over and over and over again. If you ever listen to a sermon in your life, listen to what I'm going to say this morning. 108 years ago this next week, First Baptist Church of Hammond was started. Next week, we will finish our 108 years. I promise you this, 108 years ago, the message of salvation that you'll hear this morning was what this church was founded on. 
You couldn't find a Baptist church 108 years ago that didn't believe what I'm going to preach this morning. And yet you can find thousands of Baptist churches today that do not believe what I'm going to preach this morning. And yet the Bible is very plain. He that believeth is not condemned. I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes about O.J. Simpson and lead that into our passage today. Finally got your attention, didn't I? Our Heavenly Father, bless this message to our hearts, please, especially. Amen. Some, if not most, if not all, of the polls taken concerning the O.J. Simpson trial think that O.J. Simpson is guilty. I am not advocating <coughs> or giving, expressing my opinion this morning, but I feel that most of the polls show that most of America feels that O.J. Simpson is guilty of the murder of his wife and Mr. Goldman, I think his name was. But all of us know one thing. He is not condemned. <clears throat> if he is guilty, he is not condemned. And he cannot be tried again for the same crime. Legally, he cannot be tried for the same first-degree murder charge charges. Why? A trial has been conducted, and a court has declared him not guilty, hence not condemned. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Let me transfer that to me for a minute. I admit guilt. I admit that I'm guilty of transgressing the law of God. So are you. I confess <coughs> guilty. But a trial was held 2,000 years ago on the cross. Jesus took my sins upon himself and stood before the great white throne judgment of God and was declared guilty and <coughs> paid the penalty for my sins. Then he turns and says, If you believe on me and trust me, you will not be condemned. Let's suppose today for a few moments that O.J. Simpson is guilty, and I'm not making that supposition. Let's suppose he is. He's still not condemned. I know I'm guilty, but thank God I'm not condemned. And since the trial took place for my sins 2,000 years ago, you cannot have a same trial for the same crime, uh, another trial for the same crime. I am guilty. The trial was held. Jesus took my sins against his record and was condemned for me. If I trust him and his payment, I am not condemned and cannot be tried, because he that believeth is not condemned. Now, what does that believe mean? Don't miss this. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. What does that believe mean? Jesus made it very plain. He tells about the Old Testament days when serpents had bitten the people, poisonous snakes had bitten the people. And thousands of folks were dying from the venomous bite of those serpents. Moses comes to God and said to God, I want to intercede for my people. And God said to Moses, all right, you take a piece of brass. And you beat that piece of brass until it's shaped like a serpent. And you take that brass and put that piece of brass shaped like a serpent on a pole. You hold that pole high. And tell the people what you've done. And tell the people that anybody that will believe enough to look to that piece of brass on that pole will be healed from their malady, their illness, and saved from death. That's all they had to do was look. Didn't have to join anything. Didn't have to confess anything. Didn't have to go through any rituals, any ordinances. In his sacraments, all they did was look. <coughs> there are probably people that didn't look who are better people than folks that did look. 
But those that looked were saved, and those that didn't look were lost. There are probably people that joined, belonged to, the, to a church that didn't look, and folks that did not belong that did look, but those that did look were saved, and those that didn't look were lost. The issue is not if you belonged to anything, if you've observed anything, if you have taken any ordinance or sacrament or got a confession to a priest. The issue was, did you look? Did you look? When they believed what Moses said that God had said to him and looked, they were not condemned. Many years ago, I realized that I was a sinner. And that Jesus had lift, been lifted up on the cross. And that if I would look to Him, and by looking to Him, believe that I was a sinner, and believe that I was lost and on my way to hell, and believe that Jesus Christ on the cross had paid the penalty for my sins, and rely upon that penalty and that payment to save me, I could be saved. I believe that I was a sinner. I believe that I was lost and on my way to hell. I believe that Jesus paid the penalty for my sin, and I looked to Him to save me, and that moment I was saved, and the Bible said I was not condemned. You are looking this morning at a man who is not condemned. I deserve to be condemned, but I'm not condemned. The Bible said, listen to me, the Bible said, He that believeth is not condemned. It didn't say he that joineth not the church is not condemned. He that getteth not baptized is not, uh, baptized is not condemned. He that takes communion is not condemned. He that lives a good life is not condemned. You listen to me. You can live a good life and die and go to hell, and somebody else can live a worse life and die and go to heaven because he that believeth is not condemned. You can join every church you want to and die and go to hell, and somebody can join no church at all and die and go to heaven because the Bible says, He that believeth is not condemned. Many years ago, I believed. So I stand before you this morning not condemned. I am not condemned. I may sin, and no doubt do, but I'm not condemned. I may fall in the glaring sin, but I'm not condemned. I may backslide, but He will not erase my name from the registry. I'm not condemned. You say, I don't comprehend it. You don't have to comprehend it. All you've got to do is believe it. Quit putting your little puny insignificant finite mind up against omniscience. And thank God He made it so easy. Thank God you don't have to give live a good life. Thank God you don't have to confess your sin to a guy wearing a dress. Thank God you don't have to get confirm or confirmed. Thank God you don't have to turn over a new leaf. God said you look to Calvary and believe and you'll not be condemned. I may be buffeted, chastised, disciplined, and punished, but I'm not condemned. I may be cast down, but I'm not condemned. My, my faith may come to a low ebb, but I'm not condemned. It is not the quantity of the faith that saves me. It is the reality of the faith that saves me. Look. Listen to me. Listen carefully to me. You're going to face God one day over this truth. You can walk out those doors this morning in the sight of God, not condemned. You say, preacher, okay, I'll join. You don't have to join. You believe. But you say, preacher, I'll live a better life. You don't have to live a good life. You believe. I'm sick and tired of these people talking about, you got to repent of all your sins. Brother, you couldn't repent of all your sins. In the first place, you don't even know all your sins. All those people had to do was believe what Moses said. There was a serpent raised up, and they looked to that serpent, and like that they were healed and not condemned. And anybody in this room this morning, I don't care how sinful you are, how deep in sin you've gone, how wicked you are, how vile, how filthy your life has been, you look to Jesus today and believe that He paid the penalty for your sin, and you can walk out those doors not condemned. Not condemned. Not condemned. I was like you. I wanted to see O.J. Simpson's verdict. <clears throat> I was on the road traveling. I found the television set. I was watching. 
And boy, when they read that thing, I looked at O.J. Simpson's face. <clears throat> and I said to him, I know how you feel. I know how you feel. If you're guilty, I especially know how you feel. I may, my faith may be simply a spark. And Satan and his imps may try to douse that spark. But I am not condemned. <clears throat> my faith may rise and fall like a roller coaster. But I am not condemned. I may at times lose the light of my Heavenly Father's countenance, but I am not condemned. I may lose my sweet and close walk in fellowship with my God, but I am not condemned. The Bible may grow cold to me and prayer may grow colder, but I am not condemned. I may feel the pain of my Father's rod, but I am not condemned. I may have vexed and grieved Him, but I am not condemned. He may have turned his face from me, but I am not condemned. There may be love strokes of chastening from my father's rod, but I am not condemned. Hey, what difference does it make what church you join if you're condemned in the sight of God? What difference does it make when you've been baptized or taken the Lord's Supper or the sacraments or confession? What difference does it make if you stand condemned before God? You listen to me. If you stand before God someday not condemned, you'll have to stand before God today not condemned. And you've got to look up at the Savior on the cross and say, I can't save myself. And the church can't save me. And baptism can't save me. And my good works can't save me. Just Jesus can save me. And you believe on Him, and the moment you do that, you can stand up and say, Hallelujah, I'm guilty, but not condemned. I may be assaulted by Satan until I'm near despair, but I am not condemned. I may doubt and fear that I'm on the brink of perdition, but I'm not condemned. I may slip until I'm ashamed, but I'm not condemned. I may fall back into disfavor and dishonor, but I am not condemned. I may stumble until I go to heaven with broken bones, but I am not condemned. I may sink into discouragement, depression, and despondency, but I am not condemned. I may lose my joy, my rewards, and my respect, but I am not condemned. I may disappoint God, you, and myself, but I am not condemned. I may dash in pieces all of, ten, of the Ten Commandments. Did you hear what I said? I may dash in pieces all the Ten Commandments, but I am not condemned. I may divorce the fruit of the Spirit and betroth the works of the flesh, but I am not condemned. I may be punished on earth for my sins, but am I standing in the sight of God? I am not condemned. The trial is over. I have been declared as if I would never sinned. I am innocent in the courts of heaven today as much as O.J. Simpson is in the courts of America. Lot chose the well-watered plains towards Sodom. Don't miss it. Lot chose the well-watered plains towards Sodom. Sacrificed his own daughters on the altar of decency. Yoked up with the Sodomites. Entertained the queers in his own house. Left Sodom. Goes down to Zoar and fathered illegitimate children by each of his two daughters. But Lot was not condemned because he believed. You say, let's get this straight, preacher. <clears throat> you say, if I have fathered two illegitimate children, I can still look to Jesus and not be condemned. You're getting mighty close to what I'm talking about. There's not a person in this room this morning. You listen to me. Not a person in this room this morning who is good enough to go to heaven. And there's not a person in this room this morning who ever will be good enough to go to heaven. And if you try to get to heaven because of your goodness, you'll burn in hell. You've got to take it free or you don't get it. He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth is not condemned. Abraham left the will of God and went to Egypt. There in Egypt he backslid, lied about his wife being his wife. Picked up a little made and took her back to Canaan and got her pregnant. She gave birth to an illegitimate child by Abraham. 
But Abraham believed God, and my Bible said his faith was counted for righteousness. Abraham was not condemned. Paul took a Jewish vow. He who had left Judaism took a Jewish vow, had his head shaved, and, 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 and left the will of God. But Paul was not condemned. Moses lost his temper, smote the rod, the rod twice, lost his ticket to the Holy Land. Moses was not condemned. Samson placed his head in the tempting lap of Delilah, but Samson was not condemned. You say, wait a minute, preacher, do you mean to tell me I can live like I want to and still go to heaven? You listen, when you get saved, you believe in Christ as your Savior, God declares you not condemned, and the Holy Spirit renews, um, uh, creates in you another person. And that other person lives inside of you. He doesn't want to sin. And your old nature and the new nature fight all the time. But who wins does not determine whether or not you're condemned. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Did you hear me, Church of Christ people? Baptismal regenerates. Uh, he that believeth on him is not condemned. Did you hear it, Pope? Pope, Pope, Pope. Did you hear it? He that believeth on him is not condemned. Not he that gets away from his tongue right before he dies. Not he that has the last rites. Not he that's prayed for after he's dead. He that believeth on him is not condemned, the Bible says. Noah was drunken. Noah was drunken and naked in his tent. But Noah was not condemned. Peter cursed and swore, denied the faith, <laughs> denied the church, denied the Savior, while Jesus was being tried and crucified. But Peter <laughs> was not condemned. David took Bathsheba and killed Uriah, but David was not condemned. James and John became selfish and sought the best seats in the kingdom, but they were not condemned. Solomon traded his wisdom for perfume, powder, and pretty, but he was not condemned. Saul became hungry for pride and power and pleasure, but he was not condemned. Because condemnation or not condemnation is not how you live. Do you look to Jesus on the cross? Have you believed in Jesus? Now follow me carefully. You'll never hear a better illustration of salvation than this. Back to O.J. Simpson. What did O.J. Simpson do to be not condemned? You saw it. He sat there. <laughs> That's all he did. Every once in a while, he may have made a note or two. Probably drew some pictures. But he sat there. Did o Listen to me now. Listen to me. What did O.J. Simpson do to be not condemned? Nothing. <laughs> he sat there. He just trusted his lawyer. And the reason he's not condemned is not because he pleaded his case. He knew he couldn't plead his case and win. He did not testify on his own behalf. If he had testified on his own behalf and represented himself, he would be in prison today. Praise God. That's what you've got to do to go, to go to heaven. Just sit there and trust your attorney. O.J. <laughs> Simpson, listen to me, is not condemned. He's guilty, maybe, but not condemned. He may or not be guilty, but he's not condemned. If he is guilty, he's not condemned. I am guilty. How can I be not condemned? By doing the same thing he did. I'm sick up to here of these false teachers running out here telling you you've got to confess your sin to a priest. That priest has got enough sins of his own to take care of. He better come to God and believe on the finished work of Jesus Christ himself and quit being an imposter. And the Pope, take off your robe, pay El Papa. Take off your robe and fall on your face and get saved yourself. You can't absolve a sin. You can't forgive a sin. You can't save a soul. Only Jesus can save, and that's my belief. You see, you've got a bad attitude. Yes, I've worked hard to get it, and I aim to keep it. I'm sick up to here. 
people are getting on television and saying, you hold out faithful to the end. You didn't start out faithful at the beginning. When Jesus said, he that believeth is not condemned, that was after he had told the story of the serpent raised on the pole. Praise God. Many years ago, a guilty sinner, I put my case in the hands of my lawyer. <laughs> when I stand before God, they'll say, you won't testify on your own behalf? No way. <clears throat> See my attorney. And boy, I'll tell you, as soon as O.J. Simpson was declared innocent, man, right shortly thereafter, he grabbed that attorney and hugged him. Man, when I stand before God and he declares me not guilty, not condemned, I'm going to grab my attorney and hug him. Quit trusting yourself, O.J. Let the lawyer take care of it. When I stand before God, I'll say nothing. I'll, I will not claim that I'm worthy. I will not testify on my behalf. I will simply do what O.J. Simpson did. I'll put my future in the hands of my attorney who has never lost a case. Let me show you right quickly what you got to do to be saved. Well, O.J. did. He's free today. He didn't do it as cute as I did, but he did it. <laughs> now, you listen carefully. you got one choice of two. You either put your, ha your case in the hands of the attorney or you plead your own case. I wish, I wish some of you folks had as much sense as O.J. Simpson did. He just sat there and trusted his attorney. My Bible said there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the Virgin Mary. That's not what it says. So quit praying to the Virgin Mary. There is one God and one mediator, not two, not three, one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. So quit praying to the saints that are dead. Take that St. Christopher doll off your dash. And put a Jesus saves sign up there. There's one God and one mediator. You say, Brother Hyde, you're criticizing other religions. You better know I am. I'm criticizing anybody's religion that sends you to hell on a ticket to heaven. In Milford, Ohio, preaching. Stayed in Nevada Inn. Went down to the lobby to be picked up, taken, driven to the services. There's a Catholic priest there. You say, You're against Catholic priests? I'm against Baptist preachers that don't preach the way to heaven. It's not what the title is, it's the garbage and false doctrine they teach. I decided to have a little fun. <coughs> I walked up to this Catholic priest. And I said, you're a man of God, are you? Yes. I said, good, could I talk to you a few minutes? I want to talk to a man of God. Could you sit down over here? We sat down. I said, this is life or death to me. I said, you believe in heaven? He said, oh, yes. I said, good. I want to go there. I want to go there. I said, I'm going to get my pencil and paper out. Since you're a man of God, I want you to tell me how I can get there. He said, well, it's easy. Oh, good. I'll write down it's easy. Now, what do I do? Well, he said, you do good. I said, quick, write down what good I've got to do so I won't miss it. But he said, a lot of good. I said, well, okay, how much good? I'm going to write that down now. Well, he said... A whole lot of good. I said, but name it. What good have I got to do? 
He said, well, it's hard to explain. I put my card back in my pocket and my pen back in my pocket and I said, you dirty fraud. You imposter. Rip that collar off your neck. I <laughs> sat there and can't even tell me. I said, he said, he said, oh, I bet you're a Baptist preacher. I said, now you couldn't tell me how to go to heaven. Let me tell you how to go to heaven. He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth. That means this morning if you'll simply realize that you're a sinner and realize that you're a lost sinner on your way to hell and realize that Jesus went to Calvary and look up to Calvary and believe on Him as your Savior, that means you can walk out of these doors not condemned. That means for every time you've driven 90 miles an hour in a 55 mile zone. Boy, I tell you, you better, you better get your sins forgiven, fellas. Now, you listen to me. You said, Preacher, it just doesn't seem that easy to me. You quit trying to figure out how easy it is, and you just thank God He made it easy. Jesus was dying on the cross. <clears throat> one, 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 one prisoner beside him, thief beside him, said, Yeah, you say you're God, save yourself and us. And the other man on the cross, now hear me carefully. Here's a thief, guilty, tried, condemned, and dying for his crimes. He looked over to Jesus and said, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, Don't have to wait till the kingdom, son. How about right now? He said, I'm on my way to paradise right now. I've got an empty seat right beside me. Join me for the trip. Now, wait a minute. Jesus said that fellow went to heaven, didn't he? Didn't he say that? I wonder what church he belonged to. Didn't have time to join the church. I wonder if he was sprinkled, baptized, dipped to port. Didn't have time to get sprinkled, baptized, dipped to port. Wonder how many good deeds he did. Didn't have time to do any good deeds. He was dying. I say to him, You gotta get baptized to go to heaven. He said, I can't get baptized. I'm dying. I need Jesus. Well, you gotta join the church. I can't join the church. I'm dying. I need Jesus. But you gotta hold out faithful. I can't hold out faithful. I'm dying. I need Jesus. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You can live the best life ever lived since Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, but if you don't believe on Christ as your Savior, you will die and go to hell. Old story. I was called by the St. James Hospital in Chicago Heights. They said a man's dying here. He can't live but a few minutes. He's calling for a Baptist preacher. I got in the car and drove over to St. James Hospital. The nurse said he, he won't live five minutes. He said, Reverend, if you've got anything to say to him or if you've got any sins his you want to absolve, you better hurry because you've got less than five minutes. I picked up that oxygen tent and got under that oxygen tent with him. And I said, Sir, listen carefully, listen carefully, listen carefully, listen, don't miss it. This is life or death. You're, you know you're dying. Yes, yes, yes. I said, listen carefully, I've got to hurry. Bible said in Romans 3.10, there's none righteous, no, not one. 3.23, for all his sin did come short of the glory of God. 5.12, for it's by one man sin in the world, and death by sin. Romans 6.23, the wage of sin is death. I said, sir, you're a sinner, and because you're a sinner, you owe the sin of death. But Romans 5, 8 says, But God committed His love toward us. And while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus suffered your hell in your place. I said, i got to hurry now. i got to hurry. i got to hurry. Would you trust Him? Would you, would you say this prayer and mean it? Dear God. Dear God. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. And save my soul. And save my soul. I do now trust Jesus. I, I, I do now trust Jesus. As my Savior. As my Savior. I said, take my hand, if you may. His feeble hand took mine, and tears came forth from his eyes. I looked at him, and I said, sir, did you know you're a sinner? Yes. Did you know sinners are lost? Yes. Did you know Jesus paid the penalty? Yes. I said, did you trust him as your Savior? Yes. I said, now where are you going to go when you die? He said, Kentucky. 
That's the only time I ever laughed while a man was dying. That beats hell. Not much. But some. <clears throat> and there was a man, never taken communion. A man never joined the church. A man who had no religious background whatsoever. A man that had few, if any, good deeds I found out later he'd ever performed. But he went to heaven. Why? He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth is not condemned. You say, preacher, the way you preach this morning, it makes me mad. You've made me mad. Oh, I may have made you mad, but I wash my hands of your blood. He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth is not condemned. And that belief means that you realize that you've been bitten by the serpent Satan. And that bite is fatal eternally. But that the, Jesus was lifted up on the pole. You look to him and believe. And you'll walk out those doors. <laughs> not condemned. He that believeth is 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 not condemned. Thank God. Hallelujah. Praise His name. That's all you got to do. Would you bow your heads? No one leaving, no one moving. <clears throat>